بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد ورسولا من بعد ندرس ان شاء الله تعالى في هذا اليوم متن القواعد الاربع للامام المجدد محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وبعد الشيخ سيدنا we're going to study this lesson now or today the next text which is القواعد الاربع the four important principles by the imam and the rival Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله. لكن قبل الدراسه لابد من امور. But before we study this, then we we need to know some certain we need to know certain things. لماذا ندرس التوحيد؟ Firstly, why do we study توحيد؟ وهذا قد تقدم معنا حق الله العبيد. And we took this previously that التوحيد it is the right of Allah upon His slaves. لا أقبل الله سبحانه وتعالى أي عمل إلا به. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept any action except by a tawheed. <coughs> that a person will not enter into Jannah, into paradise, except if he is a, from amongst the people of a tawheed. <coughs> and the other reasons which we have already studied, studied regarding why it is important or why we study a tawheed. <coughs> Secondly, why have we chosen to study this text, Al-Qa'id Al-Arba'i, the four important principles? Because the reason why we chose this text is because we are students, students of knowledge. And the students of knowledge, when you're studying, you have to go back to the way of the scholars. The third matter, تأليف هذا المتن أي متن القواعد الأربعة. The third matter is what is the purpose or why was this text why was it authored by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. سبب التأليف الله أعلم أن المؤلف رحمه الله أراد من تأليف هذا المتن أي متن القواعد الأربعة أن يكون عند الطالب حجة. So the reason or the objective behind which the author, Rahimullah, authored this, this text, Al-Qaid Al-Arba, and Allah knows best, is that the author wanted to give the student of knowledge answers in how to rep reply or refute some of the doubts that the people of shirk and the people of innovations give a particular doubt. And these four principles So these four principles Al-Qaid Al-Arba is as if it's a summary for the other book that he authored called Kishf al-Shubahat, Removal of the Doubts. كما أن الأصول الثلاثة تقريبا كالمختصر لكتاب التوحيد. Just as the previous book that we studied, the Usul of Thalatha, approximately is a summary of his book, Kitab al-Tawheed. Okay, so after this, if a person said to you, If somebody said to you, okay, why do we study the other book, Kashf al-Shubahat, first? And the Sheikh said, as we've mentioned, because this text, Al-Qaid Al-Arba, is a summary for that book, Al-Kashf Al-Shubahat. So why don't we study Kashf Al-Shubahat first? Because again, we're students. And a student, whilst he's studying, he shouldn't give preference to any book. Or delay the study of any book except by going back to the senior scholars. So 
ويبدا في التوحيد بالاصول الثلاثه ثم القواعد الاربع ثم كتاب التوحيد ثم كشف الشبهات. So the scholars when they want to advise the students in how they should, in how you should study they put certain books in order and they said that the first thing that a student of knowledge should begin by studying is at tawheed generally at tawheed and when you want to study at tawheed then you begin by studying number one al usul al thalatha the three fundamental principles and then after this al qaid al arba this text and then after this the next book kitab al tawheed and then after this kashf al shubhat the next book bal min al ulama rahimahumullah man yara تحريم القراءة في كتاب كشف الشبهات قبل دراسة كتاب التوحيد. Rather, some of the scholars they said it's impermissible for a student of knowledge to look into or to read the book كشف الشبهات before studying the other books of التوحيد أو كتاب التوحيد. كذلك القراءة في الكتب التي يعني مثل هذا القراءة في الكتب التي ذكرت ما شجر بين الصحابة. رضوان الله عليه هل يصح القراءة في هذه الكتب التي ألفت من أهل السنة والجماعة؟ نعم. Also similar to this or similar to these guidelines are those books which were authored by أهل السنة والجماعة regarding some of the disagreements that occurred play that occurred between the companions. Is it correct for the student of knowledge to read those books that were authored by أهل السنة والجماعة about the differences that occurred between the Sahaba? لا نو الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله تعالى الشيخ بن عثيمين من الله مرسي بن هيم سيد يرى تحريم القراءة في الكتب المؤلفة من أهل السنة والجماعة فيما التي ذكرت ما شجر بين الصحابة رضي الله عليه نعم الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله he was of the opinion that it's not permissible for a student of knowledge to look into the books which were authored by Ahl al-Sunnah regarding or which mentioned the differences that occurred between the Sahaba. The Why? Why? Because maybe you read something from these books and something will enter into your heart about the Sahaba and how they differed. And because insulting or criticizing the Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them, it's in reality insulting or criticizing Allah. And in the religion of Allah. And in the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and also insulting the Sahaba themselves. So these four things that when you criticize, when you insult one of the Sahaba, the companions, in reality you're insulting four things. You're insulting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're insulting his religion, you're insulting his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you're also insulting the Sahaba themselves. So, how are you insulting Allah when you insult the companions? Because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chose these companions as people around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not possible except that Allah would choose the best type of people for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was pleased with the, with the companions. And how is it an insult to the religion of Allah by insulting the companions? Because it's the companions who convey to us and narrate to us this religion. فلو طعنه الصحابة رضي الله عليه معنى هذا أن الدين الذي وصل إلينا وصل عن أناس ليسوا بثقات. So if now we begin criticizing or insulting the Sahaba رضي الله عليهم, this means that the religion which they conveyed, the religion which they narrated, is also deficient. Why? Because those people, the Sahaba, they're not trustworthy in narrating. طعنه في رسول الله عليه الصلاة والسلام. And how is it? an insult in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because a person is upon the way or upon the religion of his beloved friends and also when you insult the Sahaba then you're insulting the Sahaba and this is clear 
يحرم القراءة في الكتب التي ذكرت ما شجر بين الصحابة رضي الله عليهم. And therefore it's not permissible or it's impermissible to look, look into those books or read those books which mention the differences that occur between the Sahaba and one Allah So nothing enters into a person's heart regarding any of the companions. And also on the day of judgment or in your grave, the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not question you about what happened between the Sahaba and what happened when one of the of the groups oppressed the other groups. Allah will not ask you about these things. But on the day of resurrection you will be asked about but rather on the day of judgment you will be asked about the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereby he said that those people that came after them they say Rabbana O oh our Lord they say O oh our Lord forgive us and also forgive our brothers who came previous to us in the Iman of our sins and do not place any type of jealousy or hatred in our hearts for them and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question you that were you obedient to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said do not insult my companions Therefore, Therefore, when it comes to reading books or listening to sets when you're seeking knowledge, then you don't listen to the opinion of anybody. Rather, you have to go back to the ulama rabbani, those scholars who are senior in their knowledge, and they act upon their knowledge. And the last matter which should be mentioned before we begin studying this text. Is what is the contents of this blessed text or this blessed book called al fayl al Arba? What's contained within this book or text? And Allah knows best, but if we were going to divide or make an index for this box, we could say that it can be split up into three separate chapters. The first section of this text is a muqaddimah, an introduction. And in the introduction, there is a mention of the keys to happiness. And then the second section from this book we could say is why should we study at Tawheed? And then the third section of this book or the third, third chapter of this book would be the, actual, the four actual principles. An introduction and it includes the keys to happiness. Secondly, why do we study at Tawheed? يذكر دائما أو غالبا في كتب المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى لأنه هذا أمر مهم لأن هناك من يحارب من يعلم الناس التوحيد أو يتعلم التوحيد. And this issue of why we study Tawheed, you'll find this being mentioned over and over again in the various books that the author رحمه الله authored. And this is because in order to explain to you the importance of teaching and studying Tawheed, because you find some people who wage a war against those people who teach at Tawheed and Aqeedah. And then the final chapter or section is the third section which is Al-Qaid al the a mention of the four actual principles. Okay, what have, what have we taken so far? Which benefits? Now, What have we benefited from this lesson so far? Now, uh, That the book is why I study the book, and the first one is why I study Tawheed. 
لابد من معرفة أمور منها أولا لماذا ندرس التوحيد لأن هذا المتن في التوحيد والتحذير من الشرك نعم So the brother mentioned one of the benefits that he has gained is why we should study this book and for that why we should, we should study At-Tawheed. So this is the first question, why do we study Tawheed? The second question is why have we chosen this book, the book of the treaties of the four important principles? Because it's the advice of the scholars. تأليف هذه الرسالة المباركة. The third question is the reason for which this blessed treatise was authored. حتى نستطيع بإذن الله أن نرد على الشبه التي يأتي بها على الشرك في زماننا. And this is so that we can refute or we can repel the doubts that the people of Shirk come with in our time. وذكرنا أن هذا الكتاب كان مختصر لكتاب كشف الشبهات. And we mentioned that this book is like a summary for the other book, Kashf al-Shubhat. And we also mentioned why don't we study the other book, Kashf al-Shubhat, first. Is it correct to study or to look into the books which make a mention of the differences that occur between the Sahaba and the Allah alayhi We said no We said no, Shaykh ibn Uthameen rahimahullah he considered it as being haram, impermissible to look into the books that were authored by Ahl sunnah regarding some of the differences regarding the companions. And, and therefore, how about the books that were authored by the people of innovation? And we also took... And we also mentioned that anybody who insults the companions in reality, he insults Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his religion, his messenger, and the companions. And also, we mentioned that which relates to the contents or the index of the book. That, Allah knows best, the book can be split between two, three chapters or three sections. The first section, an introduction and it includes the keys to happiness. الثاني, the second section, why do we study Tawheed? And we mentioned that the author Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, he always makes, he always attaches importance to this point. He mentioned this issue of why we study Tawheed in the other book, the three principles which we've already studied. In this book also, Qawaid al-Arba'ah. And also, it will come in Kitab al-Tawheed and Kashf al-Shubhat, all of his books. And then finally the third uh, section is a mention of the three fundamental principles and this is the final section. If you revise these issues please. So if you sit in your groups and just revise the things that we just studied and then inshallah after Dhuhr we'll start studying this text uh, just one more thing to mention in terms of the in terms of the program of the Shaykh today is the final day of the Dora of the lessons so today we're going to finish al al Alba by the permission of Allah and we're going to finish at the Rusul Muhimma by the permission of Allah and I don't know depending on if there's time maybe we'll study something from Kitab Tawheed Allah Alam Inshallah we'll so we'll even take something from the book of Tawheed and then we'll finish by Isha'i